guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. Oh, welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mass making sessions and we are up to week number 143. I know, I say it every week. <laughs> Honestly, I still can't get over how many of these we have actually done. So if you watch my channel, you will know that we are doing reruns. So we are week number 143. We are rerunning week number 43. Um, you know, because obviously lots of you might have run out of things that we made previously or, you know, there's obviously lots of people who maybe haven't come across my channel before and maybe didn't see the, you know, the initial kind of, um, you know, go round of this. So anyway, what we are making this week, we are going to make some envelope booklets. So what I'm going to be using is I've got these um, long envelopes. I think these are referred to as DL envelopes in this country, in the UK. Um, they're probably kind of US, um, is it legal, US letter um, size envelopes. I've also got some of these which are more from kind of like card making, um, you know, kits and things. I have actually coloured these, um, you know, not in readiness for this video, but they just happen to be... I had coloured them, you know, for another purpose. Although, having said that, I'm now looking at these thinking, oh, actually, these are really good for those other types of booklets. So I might not actually use these. Yep, I might have to hoard those ones. Um, I have got one that I haven't coloured, so I might just use this one. But yeah, what you're going to need is basically long envelopes of some variety. Obviously, if you like to work on smaller scale stuff, you could probably use, you know, like the smaller, longer envelopes so you know you can still kind of do it but just on a sort of smaller scale the key thing is your envelope wants to be long rather than square um you know then yeah so long as it's long rather than square i think pretty much it would work at any sort of size you're going to need obviously some glue i used um anita's tacky glue which is a wet glue for the gluing of the envelopes you will then need some sort of either coffee dyed paper or I've got some food coloured dyed papers here. I've got some of this, um, it's like sort of a deli wrap. I mean, over here in the UK, this is used often for wrapping up like fish and chips and things. Um, something like that, basically to make your inner pages like for booklets. So any of those kinds of things. And then you're going to either want staples, um, you know, stapler or your sewing machine to staple in your you know your pages and then to cover the covers and this will all become apparent obviously as soon as we get making um some you would either want some patterned papers of which i've bought along you know lots minor principles again that's because that's what i have got most of obviously these days if you don't have principles that's absolutely fine you can use book pages um, you can use sheet music, you can use scrapbook paper, you know, anything that you like. It's just to put some decorative page basically on the outside of your booklet. Aside from that, you may want something to use as like a closure. You might want a circle punch if you wanted to put thumb holes, for instance, in your booklets. You're going to need scissors um, and you may or may not want a corner rounder it just depends so as this goes on we'll kind of like experiment with a few different sort of things so I'm going to demonstrate one or two first and then we will get kind of doing a mass make so I'm going to take my rectangular envelope like this now all we're going to do is glue the envelope closed in the first instance so I like to just glue down you know like here where the flat kind of touches this this edge if that makes sense so I just kind of glue that closed like that. And then obviously I want to also glue the entire flap shut. So I just go around there like that and around there like that. I mean, basically all you're wanting to do is ensure that your envelope is, you know, is properly sealed. So like that, okay. And then all we're going to do, and obviously if you follow my channel, you know everything I ever do is like super simple. I never ever do anything that's complicated because hey, who can be bothered doing complicated things? So then all we're going to do is literally fold our envelope in half. And it's up to you whether you fold it inside or whether you fold it kind of, you know, on the outside, if you see what I mean. Um, I don't think it really matters. I think I've probably made them, you know, both ways and actually both work fine and that's it okay so then all you're going to do is take some of your for instance coffee dyed paper let's just take some I'm going to use the food colour paper I think actually for this one 
So all I want to do is take my food colour paper and then cut down into a sort of square shape that's going to then fit onto here. So like this, just cut my paper down like that. Okie dokie, so that's going to fit on there and then I'm just going to fold it up so I just get my, you know, rough lines where to cut it. Now, again, <laughs> you know, I'm not saying that this is the best way how to cut um, or measure your, your papers. It's just, I mean, I'm not a sort of measuring person. So for me, this is just the quickest and easiest way for me to get, you know, um, the size pieces that I need. So that's like that. And then if I just cut along my folded edge here, I will obviously get my size that I want to glue onto the envelope. So like that. And then I'm just going to round the corners. One, two. And this, of course, is optional. You don't have to round the corners. You know, absolutely, yeah, up to you, really, how you, how you finish it off. And then you're going to glue these in here so that they cover your envelope so these are then you know your initial kind of writing surfaces so like that okay so there's the first one i like to use um you know an old gift card or a store card or you know any of those kinds of things the hotel cards that you get um as my glue spreader so just kind of spread it down like that and then of course the other one actually I'm going to glue it uh, oh, it probably doesn't really matter which which way I was gluing it I was trying to see if one side had prettier you know prettier stained marks than the other side <laughs> but yes I'm sure it doesn't really matter um like that onto your envelope and it, oops again just take your glue spreader, spread that out. I mean, you might have, you know, one of those proper glue spreaders, who knows? But yeah, I mean, I think these cards just work absolutely fantastically. That is it. Oops, sorry, just burnt my finger on my hot glue gun that's resting to the side. Um, that's it. And then you're going to take your inner pages. Mine just happens to be the right size. The piece that I cut off just happens to be the right size. Um, but, you know, I mean, that's more luck you know, in that instance than um, intention. And then I'm just going to cut my, you know, this is my deli paper now. Cut that down here. Just to form another couple of pages. Like that, okay. Okie dokie, move these out of the way. Just layer those pages up. like that Oops. and then these pages you can either then staple these in or you can oops, stitch them down the middle so you know can decide which would you know suit you best so for this I'm just going to staple these in now I have to say I've only got my Tim Holtz stapler here and I'm not sure this is going to reach mm, it's not and I don't think you can open these Tim Holtz ones out Please let me know if you if you can. I've tried before and I didn't seem to manage to do it. But right, I've folded it twice. So just to be able to get in on my crease line. Oops. Like that. Okay. I have not done a good job of that at all, but I think that was just um yeah. My shoddy, you know, shoddy hold in. So like that. And then all we're going to do is cover the front. So I'm just having a quick look through my papers here, finding something that's going to complement those beautiful green, you know, inner, inner papers. So I'm going to go with this, I think. Okay. So, oh, just having a quick look. Oh, this is where I'm not going to really have enough of this. Aha, uh -huh. right. I thought I'd bought in a few. So, yeah. Okay, 
Oh, it's fine. So I'm just going to make my template with this. So again, you know, by, by making my template, what I'm really meaning is just fold my paper in like that. Okay. And then I just, again, fold it up to, you know, the approximate point where I want to cut it. I like to kind of have a little bit of a border around my envelope, but you know, that is just personal preference really. And, you know, just because I like that today or at the moment or this week, you know, it doesn't mean that's always my preference. Sometimes, you know, we change our styles, change our preferences, change our, our likes, our habits, don't we? That's just how I'm quite liking it at the moment is, you know, with a bit of a border. So I've got that one and I'm just going to cut out now from the, the other one, just using that one as a template. So just go in a fraction and the only reason I'm going in a fraction is because actually I noticed that it was probably a little bit too big still so like that okay and then I'm just going to take this obviously glue this down on the front and the back okie dokie like that and yeah glue that down there so I mean I've just glanced at the camera and so far this is we're nearly up to 12 minutes so I mean they're kind of you know taking about 12 minutes to make them obviously I haven't decorated this or anything so by the time it's decorated I mean obviously it's going to take you know significantly longer they're not the quickest thing in the world to make, but they are a really, really super nice um, piece, you know. So I think, although they're not the the fastest thing, I think they're kind of worth worth the effort. Um, and they're probably, also, they are worth doing in a mass make style because you would perhaps be able to make them a little bit faster by, you know, doing a mass make sort of assembly line style for them. But, I mean, they're just lovely, aren't they? And then also then what you can do is here, see on your edges, because it's obviously an envelope. And this again is optional. You may decide actually you won't, you know, you won't do this. But what you can do is cut your edge and, you know, you may want to do it perhaps just at the front or front and back. You know, you've got options. But then cut this open. I'm just going to quickly dab some glue down there to hold that corner and this corner here just a bit of a quick fix and then you could put obviously your thumb hole in here so i'll just put my circle punch in this is a one and a half inch circle punch so it's you know slightly bigger well half half an inch bigger than obviously the one inch circle punch okay like that but you know the um the thumb hole punch uh, the thumb hole you know that's completely optional you may decide to you may decide to leave it but it just kind of adds a nice touch doesn't it and that's it that's all there is to these and then you can obviously decorate them up or not you could have closures on them you know however you really fancy so i'm going to put that to one side i'll run you through that again and then we'll kind of mass make some like i say they're not really the quickest thing you know to make but I think they are worth the effort. So I'm starting by gluing down those little end bits on there. I'm then gluing down my flap like that. Okay. Do it with my glue spreader. Make sure it's, you know, it's nice and firmly glued down. Like that. Okay. and then fold it in. So just to kind of give you a sort of, you know, what it would be like if it was folded the other way, I'm going to just fold this one on the outside. So the, you know, the envelope flap section is on the outside rather than the inside. Obviously the previous time we did it on the inside. Oh, that's the other thing that you might like your bone folder, you know, if you want. Personally, I find the scissor handles, you know, work absolutely fine, but yeah, you may or may not want to have your bone folder. Okay, and then we're going to just take some coffee dyed paper. So 
got some plain coffee dyed paper sheets here which we will then fold over for our template. Oops, like that. Okie dokie. And just then fold this, or cut, sorry, cut this down. Like that. And then, you know, I find the easiest way is just literally pop it onto your envelope, check that you've got your border where you want it and fold it back up. And that then tells you, you know, that's just like a template, tells you where to, to make your next cut. So fold it down and then I just cut along basically where I've, you know, where I've squished it down. Um, you know, that's just my, my cheaty type methods. But, you know, you may find that they work nicely for you too. But, I mean, if not, I'm sure you've got, you know, methods that you find work best for, for you. So, this one here, we'll cut the edges off and then round the corner or not. Obviously, you know, completely up to you. Completely, you know, optional. So, take my corner rounder. Like that. Okay. okay. And then we'll just then glue this down here. So take my glue. And I mean, you know, you could have pockets on the inside of these. You know, you don't have to just have your plain coffee dyed paper. You know, you could you could have neither a pocket or the coffee dyed paper. You could have a decorative piece. You could have a cluster. You know, it's, it's your piece then to kind of make your own. I mean, personally, I find, um, you know, these are probably best, you know, for me, I think I like them like this um, because I'm not over keen, perhaps on the look of a pocket with the pages and the envelope and things like that. I don't necessarily think it looks um, as nice as this looks. I'm not saying I would never do that. I'm simply saying my preference probably is this. Um, and the other thing is, of course, you know, if you've got pockets and pages and things like that, or clusters, say, you know, you're going to bulk it out quite a bit, which, again, maybe that's not a problem, but it might be a problem. So it's just worth bearing in mind and kind of asking yourself, you know, can I afford to bulk this out or actually, you know, do I need to keep this a little bit, sort of, you know, rein it in a little bit. So just then cut my pages down like that okay obviously I will hang on to this I don't know whether I will use it for a page in one of these because it would be a bit small now but having said that you can have obviously a regular page sizes but if not I can use that for a little flippy pad so take my pages and just interline them like that and then just pop that on there and then obviously up to you whether you want to have the fold on the top or the bottom it doesn't matter because of course you know you're going to have um what was I going to say you're going to have paper over it that was what I was going to say I lost my train of thought there for a minute so we pop this fold it over for our template like that okay 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 down and then just you know fold that up approximately in half so and this paper is from my um pink ladies um background papers and the green paper i think it's from i think they're just green labels um green labels and something or other um uh, but they've got the architecture pictures and things so yeah, if you were looking, that's the that's the two things that I've used so far. So, or if not if you were looking, but you know, if you wanted to to know if you were wondering what papers I'd use. So we then can pop this one down. Actually, I might have it this way round. Like that. And of course, you know, you can then ink this up and what have you. So this one I will just save this and then I will just take them all to the sewing machine. Um, probably actually after the video, you know, in slow time 
so that I can hopefully actually get a few more made rather than, you know, faffing around taking them to the sewing machine. But I would do exactly the same as what we did with the stapler. You know, I stitch straight down the spine to attach my pages. So, you know, you've got options, either stapler or, um, you know, sewing machine. Or, of course, I mean, you could use your embroidery thread and, you know, stitch them in as you would on a signature on a journal you know, use whatever kind of floats your boat at the time. So, you know, and just because you fancy one thing one one time doesn't mean that's always going to be your method. So, I mean, actually, to be honest, stitching these in as per like, you know, you would with a journal, how gorgeous would that look? I mean, obviously, yeah, that would probably take you a little bit longer um, to do. But, you know, if you're making a special journal or, you know, maybe whilst you're watching TV, you could kind of prep all of these and then you could just take them down to the TV one evening and stitch in a bunch of signatures while you're watching TV. You know, how fun would that be? And then you've got some really special, gorgeous ones with the hand-stitched signatures in. So, you know, I think there's lots of options to do or to, you know, to, yeah, to, to finish these. So again, just going to kind of open it slightly, trying not to drop the pages out and just cut open the side so you've got that extra pocket in the side like I say that's an optional thing and it's also did you want to do the back and the front just the front just just the back you know or neither you know either is or any any of those are fine so that's the basics so let's kind of just get on and do like an assembly line kind of um style make here so oh, these are actually um you know self-seal envelopes now, personally, I don't ever trust the self-seal envelopes. I always like to add glue as well because I just never really feel very confident that they're actually going to glue down. Um, you know, I'm sure they probably do, but I don't know about their longevity. So I always like to kind of add glue to those types of things as well. So just adding my glue there. So I'm just going to do that with a bunch of the envelopes. Now, I did quickly watch my last version of doing this, I know I've said this before, but yeah, whenever I do a kind of mass make rerun, re rerun, I do try and watch the one that I did previously, <laughs> just as a bit of a recap, because I mean, sometimes I can't remember how to make something myself. Um, or, you know, maybe I can remember what it was I was making, but my method maybe has changed a lot over the time and you'd wonder what on earth I was doing. So um, yeah, I do always try and kind of like have a bit of a rewatch, re re rewatch that's for some reason tongue twister um yeah i do like to have a bit of a rewatch um i don't know what i was saying now with that what was i actually saying that for oh yes so in the last one i think i made six so let's see if we can beat six today you know even if we only do seven let's let's really try and uh, beat our beat our score from last time shall we that would be really good. So, yeah, just literally gluing these down. And then we'll probably do all the folding. And then all the, you know, the gluing of the inside pages. And the stacking up of the, you know, the outside pages. And then the covering of the, the external bits. So, yeah. Anyway, let's just kind of have a nice relax now, have a catch up and yeah, just have a bit of bit of fun really. So obviously I'm filming this on a Monday, ready to go up on the Tuesday for you guys. And I say all this every week, it's so boring to listen to me, but I just repeat myself and I know I say this every week as well, or pretty much every video, but I repeat myself because you don't know whether people are joining for the first time. And um, yeah, if they are, I just want to make them feel welcome and know what's going on. Um, so yeah. So I hope everybody's week has started out well. I have to say it's a bit of a, a bit of a grey old day here today. It was gorgeous at the weekend, lots of sunshine. Um, I think Saturday, yeah, Saturday was better than Sunday. Sunday was still nice. It had not been forecast to be great, but it was still nice. Um, but my son, my middle son, and my daughter and I, we went to the beach and. Um, yeah, we were only there for about not quite two hours because it then got quite chilly. Um, so we decided actually our garden would be 
far hotter than the garden, uh, than the beach. And to be honest, the amount of time this, that happens, which is annoying, because I mean, obviously when you get to the beach, there's that beach breeze, isn't there? Um, you know, which invariably does always make it colder. You know, obviously it's always colder than the garden. Um, but sometimes it's, it's colder than others, isn't it? So yeah. Anyway, we were there for a couple of hours, nearly a couple of hours, so um, it was okay. And, you know, we're quite fortunate because, or, you know, very fortunate because we live, um, you know, about a 20-minute drive from the beach. So, I mean, it's actually only about eight miles or so, but, yeah, by the time you factor in any traffic and things like that, it's about 20 minutes. So, um, yeah, but anyway, we had a nice time. Saturday, um, oh, Saturday was just, just doing chores. So yeah, not a very fun day. So the latest on the room move. So the room move is really almost finished. So yeah, really, really almost finished. Um, we literally just have a little bit more painting to do. I'm repainting my daughter's room because um, this seems to be a bit of a habit of mine lately, but I'm not happy with the color that we painted in her room. Um, I think I might have said this last week, but it's come to the point I don't want to look in there. You know, kind of even glancing in, I'm like, oh, why did I choose that colour? She's got this lovely jungle wallpaper. It looks gorgeous. But the colour that I've put on the walls, I mean, my mum was like, well, I don't know why you chose that colour. That colour's not anywhere in the wallpaper. But I felt like it was. <laughs> you know, at the time, I felt like it was going to bring that colour out of the wallpaper. But sadly, it hasn't. So... Yeah, kind of wish I hadn't done that colour. But anyway, so we've got some samples, um, you know, ready to repaint her room. So, uh, yeah, we were just kind of doing some finishing touches and things. And, yeah, still a bit more tidying up to go. Um, but, you know, we really are really nearly there. I mean, compared to a couple of weeks ago, the house is like a dream now. Because you literally couldn't step out onto the landing two weeks ago. Whereas now the landing is pretty much clear. Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing. It just feels so much calmer um, in the house, which is amazing, amazing, amazing. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where we are with that. Um, I've got a lot of things to go back to Ikea, I have to say, because I bought a lot of like storage box things. You know, they're like cardboardy ones that you kind of fold up together. I bought quite a few of those and I bought a lot of their like picture frame shelves um, which actually now it's transpired I haven't really got room to actually put them up so yeah I need to take those back to Ikea. Ikea is about um, oh, I don't know it's probably about 25 miles it takes about around about 45 minutes or so to get there um, so it's kind of like a whole not necessarily saying a whole day but definitely a whole afternoon outing to go there but yeah I I need to go there and kind of do that so that's all um you know kind of piled up ready to go I've still got furniture that I'm hoping to sell I've sold one or two things but I have more things to sell my daughter's old bed and things like that thankfully we did get rid of her wardrobe so that was a massive thing that's gone um but yeah I've still got like a little chest of drawers of hers um yeah various things so still got quite a bit to go um it's all still piled up in my front living room so um although kind of you know upstairs is now looking better downstairs is still still suffering a little bit of the after effects of the the change around um but you know that's fine I I don't mind because hey compared to how it was a couple of weeks ago it's it's amazing so yeah that's kind of that now I'm going to I think try and fold all of my papers in yeah, I'm going to try and do this and then, um, yeah, that perhaps is going to be the best, most efficient way to do this. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of that. I'm trying to think what else, what else, what else. Um, hmm. oh, I've got this one, which is not obviously a full piece of paper, but that's fine. So I think what I'll do with this one, yeah, I need to come like over to here on this side of this and fold it back this way. Oh, check that out. That was just perfect size, wasn't it? Uh, 
Ah, right, that brings me on to the next thing. So yes, I have been obviously filming my craft room. Um, nearly done, nearly, nearly done with that. Um, I know that I did say last week, but obviously it's kind of, um, it's one of those things that, you know, you have to still be filming other videos in the meantime, if you see what I mean. So yeah, I have been filming it as I can. Um, but trying to film other things as well. So, um, yeah, it's kind of taking longer than, you know, longer than it sounds like it should, if you see what I mean. Because obviously you have to factor in, you know, you've got to be filming other things as well at the same time. Um, but yeah, hopefully that will be coming up in the next few days. Obviously I've still got my uh, beginner's uh, basics junk journal digi kit um, series. That's still running. So there's a couple more, I think, of that to do. And then hopefully we'll have to flip through. Although I have to say, I still haven't quite finished that journal. So um, yeah, I will be kind of finishing that hopefully this week. Right, I'm just going to quickly get some more paper. Right, I'm back. Sorry about that. I suddenly realised I didn't really have enough coffee dyed paper and things with me. So um, yeah, I've got, got some more now. So just going to continue quickly folding down to make my, um, you know, kind of pages and uh you know the kind of bits that I glue down onto the covers um where was I I don't know what I was saying oh and also I just moved the camera up slightly or you know moved it back slightly so could you let me know please what you're thinking to the camera angle um yeah I, it's very difficult to get it sorry I'm just just fiddling it around with it a bit more it's very difficult to get it kind of how I think it's going to be best for you guys um you know because I really really like to see um you know how many minutes I'm up to as well if I possibly can and obviously that's not always possible but it's kind of quite handy um but the camera doesn't seem to you know want to kind of do that or be at that angle um so yeah let me know what you think am I kind of too close and um yeah if I am I will try my best to rectify that but it's it's tricky to get it just right isn't it but in with the um rim move and I know that I have said this before I will also be having um you know a bit of a um yeah an unboxing and a setup of my new camera system well not camera system I mean I'm still just filming on my phone but my new camera stand um which I'm really quite impressed with but I suspect that you know I probably need to tighten up a few of the things because I can't really get it to go much higher and I think probably that's just user error and you know if I play around with it I think it probably will go higher um but yeah let me know what you think anyway and like I say that that video will also be coming up so um yeah anyway so that is that right now I'm going to fold this now kind of the other way as well so I think this is kind of approximately in half yeah it is so like that okay which actually I'm now thinking did I fold I think maybe I cut these down previously before before folding them I can't remember now it was literally two minutes ago that's what I mean about my my ability to remember what I was doing there's just no ability there whatsoever yeah so we'll cut all of these down anyway and um kind of go from there but yeah so I hope that everybody else's week has started out well I hope you're um, having a nice time, maybe doing some crafting. I'd love to hear what projects you're working on. So, you know, thank you so much to everyone who does comment and say, you know, what projects are working on. Or, well, the people who comment anyway. That's so kind of you. Um, but yeah, I love hearing what projects you're working on. And I know that um, a couple of weeks ago, you know, when we did our banner paper clips, I had a lovely comment from... Now, the comment was from Mummy Artie. So hi there, Mummy Artie, if you're watching. Now, I do apologise for just calling you Mummy Artie, but I actually don't know what your name is. Um, you know, I've just got your YouTube name. And yeah, so you always make the most amusing comments and I love reading them. I don't always have time to, you know, to fully comment back. Um, but, you know, I do read kind of everybody's comments. But um, yeah, I just, you know, sometimes... Um, 
you know, if I don't know somebody's name, I just have to refer to them as their obviously YouTube name, which, yeah, is not probably, you know, not necessarily saying it's what you want to be re referred to as. But anyway, so yeah, Mummy Artie. And I'm just cutting this down rather than using this as the pages because actually this gives me four sides that I can glue in straight away. So I'm just going to do that with one or two of these. In fact, this might well be enough to actually fill my fill my envelopes now. Um, yeah, she made a comment after the banner paper clips and said she was doing something. And thank you so much to her because I have gone on now to do what you were doing um, <laughs> myself. And yeah, made a video doing those. So thank you so much. And of course, I have mentioned you in the video. Of course, I have mentioned you calling you Mummy Artie because I didn't know your name still. But yeah, thank you so much. So, I mean, it is really lovely to hear what you're you're working on. And I know that it was a couple of weeks ago, I think it was April, who had mentioned the um, she was working on the envelope stack junk journal. And of course, thank you so much, April, because she gave me the wonderful idea of doing the reverse em envelope stack, um, you know, for the junk journal basics kit that we are currently working on. So, you know, it really is so handy and helpful when we all share our projects because, you know, it really does kind of, you know, inspire and kind of, um, yeah, just kick off, kick, kick start ideas, you know, for one another. So, yeah, please don't be shy and, you know, just, just say what you're working on because I think it's lovely for everybody, you know, and I'm sure that we all kind of appreciate um, you know, reading through the comments and getting kind of ideas and inspiration for more projects. So, yeah. And yeah, you know, I mean, thank you to everyone who comments generally. I really do appreciate it. And I just want to say a massive thank you to the lovely Margaret. So, Margaret, if you are watching now, Margaret lives quite close to where I live. Um, oh, probably, oh, I don't know, maybe 12 miles or so, 15 miles, not very far anyway. Um, to where I live and uh, yeah so she had placed an order a um, couple of weeks ago or you know three weeks ago and she, unfortunately I'm so sorry Margaret I just have this massive apology she was one of the very slow to post orders of mine you know me very slow to post not not anybody else um, because of course it coincided with the room swaps and I do still have one order still pending waiting to go out so really massive apologies it's to the lovely tina so i really apologize tina um i had actually packed your um parcel up and then the post office were closed and things like that and so it's now been kind of sat around in the car um but i'm so so sorry and you know yes of course it's on my on my radar and i'm going to try and post it out um today later on this afternoon um but to the lovely margaret she, yeah she lives about 15 miles really from where i live and um I just want to say how much you made my day the other day because she had sent me not only the most lovely card and with the kindest words and I love hearing about you know people's lives and kind of you know just getting to know you all a bit better um but she also sent me a lovely Costa voucher and that was just so kind of you thank you so so much and I mean thank you to everybody who's done the buy me a coffee and you know I can't tell you how much I appreciate it because I do absolutely love my Costas I love having a hot chocolate from Costa um, <clears throat> and you know those kinds of things really do kind of help and brighten my day and just yeah so lovely but I mean your kind words and that card and things it just made my day and the best thing about it was <laughs> The day that you sent it, my son, he's doing GCSEs at the moment, which are his, you know, his kind of exams, you know, for his final exams before he leaves school. And um, he had just literally got in because he's like kind of doing exams. And then when they're not doing exams, they can come home early and, you know, whatnot. So he came in and I was, you know, up filming. And of course, when he got in, I kind of said, oh, you know, we'll go and grab a Costa, um, you know, now you're home. And lo and behold, I went downstairs and the postman had obviously been and I just opened the post and there was that lovely card from you, Margaret. Um, so thank you so, so much because obviously he and I were able to go and have our Costa 
um, with your lovely gift cards. So thank you so, so, so much. I can't tell you how much I appreciated it. And yeah, it literally kind of choked me. So, you know, and your kind words and things. So thank you so, so, so much. Um, you know, and thank you likewise to everybody who does the buy me a coffee and things. You know, it's so appreciated and... <laughs> you know I yeah really really appreciate it thank you very 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 much so yeah really um felt very spoiled thank you so yeah he's doing his GCSEs he's um oh I'm not sure how many exams he's had now I'm kind of losing track to be honest um I think last week was the first week but it felt like he did a lot of exams I have to say so this week he's um I don't think he's got an exam until Wednesday. So today he's actually home, which is lovely. So I will hopefully kind of get to spend a bit of time with him later. Um, you know, just quickly working kind of, you know, this morning. And um, yeah, we'll hopefully spend a bit of time just me and him later. Um, obviously my daughter's at school and my other son is at work. So, you know, it's nice when you can kind of have one-to-one -one time with, with just, you know, the two of you, isn't it? So yeah, hopefully spend a bit of time with him. But I think he's starting the, his exams properly, you know, on Wednesday for this week's. And then, oh, he's got a really full on week, even though it's only three days of the week that he's doing the exams. I think he's actually got several um, crammed into those three days, uh, including, I think, maths and, you know, all the horrible subjects, the maths, the physics, the, you know, all of those grim, grim subjects. So yeah and then the kids break up actually for half term um you know which actually and now i can remember this with my other son and thinking oh why have they shoved a half term in amongst the exams because i can remember my other son he was kind of in the swing of doing the exams and you know oh sorry just burnt my finger um kind of in the swing of doing the exams and then like, he had half term which kind of almost like I'm not saying ruined it but you know kind of like um he was in the swing of it and then that came as a bit of a halt in the proceedings and it it never seemed to then go quite back you know his enthusiasm had kind of waned a bit I mean I'm guessing it's a tried and tested method you know that's gone on for years and they they must think it works but yeah I can actually remember with my other son and thinking oh for goodness sake why have they put you know, a half term, smack bang in the middle of the exams, because actually it felt like it didn't really, you know, do him a lot of good at all, but I assume it, it's, you know, it does work, but yeah, it didn't feel like it did. Right, okay, so I've done another four there, I'm just going to do another couple, and then we'll, um, you know, do the inner pages, and then we'll decorate one, so. Okay, okay keep those pages to have with that and then just do this one I think so yeah of course haven't been to the cinema and I think like that still um last week I don't think um yeah I don't think so just because it's been busy and things so yeah but hopefully life will be you know begin to calm down now and we can kind of go back to the cinema and things like that because we love going to the cinema so, you know, it's rubbish when we can't go, really. Okay. Oh, the big news in our house is... So, I know I've talked endlessly about my daughter's awful, awful, awful curly hair and trying to keep on top of it. I mean, her hair is gorgeous, but oh my goodness, it is, well, not a, not a, not a nice thing to look after at all. So, you know, I've talked about this hundreds of times, I know, and we just put it in plaits every single day. You know, she just has plaits. And I mean, I'm not saying we put it in plaits every single day. We don't do that. We put it in plaits once and then she keeps those plaits in for like, you know, a week or whatever. And then we just wash it and redo the plaits and then it stays in for another week. Um, anyway, the big news is she's kind of started brushing her own hair. So last night was, of course, you know, plait doing night. And, you know, she picked me, oh, can I not have to wash my hair? Can we just redo the plaits? You know, so, oh, for goodness sake. 
Oh, okay, we will just do, you know, redo the plaits. So um, we always use this like anti-tangly type spray and things like that when we do her hair and, you know. Um, so she's kind of familiar with the process, but yeah, she's never kind of actually embarked on, you know, the joyous task of actually trying to get a brush through it herself. Anyway, she, she did last night and I mean, it still took quite a long time, kind of a good like 40 minutes probably to do her hair. But she was able to actually do a lot of it herself, i.e. a lot of the brushing. Um, and even then, like, when I came to actually then do it myself, you know, I said straight away, oh, there's a massive knot here, you know, and I was able to put her hands straight onto the knot so she could feel it. And then she actually was then able to kind of, like, coax the knot out herself. Um, whereas normally obviously it would be me trying to do it. And of course, my goodness, she's like crying. And I mean, of course she's crying. It's horrible, isn't it? But yeah, I mean, people must think I'm literally murdering her. So I'm going to probably stop there. So, um, it was my goal to do more than last time. So <laughs> just based on this, I've now done, um, seven. So yeah, I've beat myself by one. Not that I've actually completed them, but yeah, <laughs> hopefully I will have done. Um, so, yeah, that was the big news yesterday, was she actually was brushing her own hair. And, um, yeah, it was just so much calmer and better, you know, because obviously, although it still took a long time, you know, I was just able to kind of help her every now and then with, you know, odd bits. Or like when I say, when I came to then do the plaits, I was just able to say, well, you know, can you feel this knot? And then she could kind of do the knot herself which I can't tell you just how much better that was, you know, because obviously, yeah, it's normally a really horrible traumatic experience, you know, for probably both of us and probably everybody else, you know, actually in the street because she's so noisy, you know, and making such a fuss. Like I say, rightly so, because of course, you know, it's pretty horrible, I, I realise, but yeah, it was so much better. So, you know, I said to her, oh, I'm so proud of you, you know, you've done your own hair. Oh, I can't wait to do my own plaits. So I can't wait for her to do her own plaits either. So that's our next thing is kind of like teach her how to do her own plaits. Um, you know, I mean, I have to say your heart does go in your mouth a little bit at times because you're watching her and you think, oh my goodness, is she actually going to make the knots worse? You know, like because how they brush their hair, it's not necessarily <laughs> kind of the best way, is it? Um, but anyway you know, hey, she was doing it and that's, that's good enough for me. So, um, yeah, that was the big news. The big news was she's been brushing her own hair and hopefully soon be plaiting her own hair. Oh, can't come soon enough, honestly. So yeah, she was thrilled, absolutely thrilled with her, um, efforts. And like I say, I mean, it will be even better once she can actually plait it. And, you know, like I said to her, I mean, the thing is now, if she can actually brush it herself a little bit, you know, she'd be able to wear it down and things like that, which, you know, of course she can't now wear it down currently because, you know, it's just such a horrible experience when we come home and then she has to have her hair done. Whereas if she can do it herself, you know, she can actually then kind of wear her hair down and things like that. So, yeah, she's keen, keen to be able to do that. And of course she's keen to be able to do it because she won't have to endure the you know, the misery of having her hair brushed. So, you know, by me. Um, so, yes, very, very exciting. I mean, she's eight, um, which probably, I know, probably sounds like, well, why isn't she doing her own hair? But, you know, I mean, actually, curly hair is pretty, pretty nightmare -y, So, uh, you know, I can see why she's not doing it herself, you know. But, yeah, anyway, she's kind of getting there, but... Yeah, she was super, super excited to have done that. And I was super excited that she'd done it as well. <laughs> so, yeah. Trying to think what other news that we have. Um, that's probably about it. Oh, I have been watching. So at night, kind of come about nine o'clock, obviously, you know, I go to my room, um, you know, to watch TV without the children so I can then put on I mean obviously when I say without the children I mean without my daughter you know um the boys of course they're able to watch you know grown up things now but um yeah without my daughter so I have been watching The Staircase now 
I didn't really realise that the staircase, I thought that was a drama for some reason. I thought it was a Harlan Coben thing. I don't know why, why I thought that or where I got that from. Anyway, not a drama, not a Harlan Coben thing. It's, it's based on a true story. So there is a, um, what do you call it? You know, dra a dramatization, dramatization of it with Colin Firth, um, which I have watched on Netflix. And then there is the real, you know, um, following, I guess you would call it, the real following of the story of what happened. I've got to be truthful and say I haven't watched it properly because I've been doing other things. Um, you know, but it is quite good. Right, now all of these I'm going to take obviously to the sewing machine after the video. So I'm not actually going to be putting these together, but, you know, we've done these. And then I'm just going to cover the outsides with some paper. So, yeah, let's just pull in some papers quickly. Just so that I've made a bit more progress so yeah let's just take this here yeah so anyway um I haven't been watching it properly I watched the drama a little bit better funnily enough than I've been watching the um you know the real real saga if you know what I mean um yeah no idea why really but anyway so I'm now watching the real thing like I say I've been switching on and off if if you know what I mean because I've been doing things like you know like on Facebook where you're then you know listing your furniture and things like that so yeah I haven't really been kind of giving it my full attention but um anyway I have been oh and I had been obviously looking for bits and bobs you know for my craft room and things like that so uh yeah but anyway I digress so I'm I'm kind of watching that but not as well as I should be so I'm probably not as um, as clued up as I should be on what's gone on, really. But anyway, it's quite good. And, you know, I don't really know, um, you know, kind of what happened. But I did see something about it, um, you know, on another programme, which had mentioned that he is now out... Um, now out of prison and I think they said he's he either did appeal it or he's going to appeal it I'm not sure which but anyway it's quite good um I mean of course I thought well he obviously did do it I don't know I don't know because now it's transpired that some of the evidence was kind of like falsified um so I, I yeah I don't know but the thing that is very strange about it is this man who obviously, you know, it's about um, his wife was, you know, dead at the bottom of the staircase. What is quite strange is he had actually found somebody many years previously also dead at the bottom of the staircase, which, uh, like, what are the odds of that? But, <laughs> you know, I mean, I guess, I don't know. I don't know. I'm torn. <laughs> you know, do we sort of say, well, sometimes coincidences do happen. That was from my Myrtle Cottage papers, by the way. And then I'm going to make one from my Junk Journal Basics um, kit because, yeah, I've been obviously using it a lot. And, um, yeah, just going to use that here. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I know it sounds weird to kind of say, but... I don't know. I mean, could that be a possibility of a coincidence? I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? You know, I mean, it would be pretty bad luck, wouldn't it, to find one person dead at the bottom of the stairs. To find two people dead at the bottom of the stairs at totally separate times, like kind of 10 years apart. I, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Is that just too random, too much of a coincidence? But then having said that, the other part of me says, well, if you were going to kill somebody... You'd have to be pretty stupid, wouldn't you, to kill them both in the same way, i.e. at the bottom of the stairs. I mean, who would do that? So, I don't know. I don't know what to think. But, um, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely a sort of food for thought type of scenario, if nothing else. Anyway, let me know. Are you watching it? What have you been thinking? 
you know, are you a bit like me? Like, I mean, like, come on, that just doesn't happen twice to somebody. Or are you like me and kind of going, well, I don't know. I mean, how ridiculous would you be to do that twice in the same way? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, let me know what you think. And I'm so sorry if I've just spoiled it for you and you're watching it, but, oh. I mean, obviously, the plot is very evident at the beginning, so I don't think I've ruined it for anybody because, you know, straight away you you are knowing what's, you know, what's going on and what it's about. So I don't think, hopefully, I've ruined it, you know, by saying what I've said. Um, so, yeah, anyway, it's, it's been quite good. Um, and the drama is with Colin Firth, who was obviously the... Um, oh, Mark Darcy in Bridget Jones' Diary. And, of course, Mr Darcy in Pride and Prejudice, um, which I have never seen that, would you believe? Yep, I know. I've I've seen other Pride and Prejudices, because um, I think there was one at the cinema, wasn't there? But, yeah, I haven't seen that one. Um, I've seen snippets of it, you know, clips of it. Uh, I'm not sure really whether he would have been my cup of tea. He was very, um, I don't know, a bit standoffish. I mean, I know that was his character anyway in that, you know, Pride and Prejudice, the story. But I don't know. I'm not sure that's my my type of thing. But anyway, not Pride and Prejudice, but his, his character. I'm not sure that he would have been, you know, my kind of man. But anyway. So, yeah, that's anyway one that I have been watching and... Um, sort of loosely loosely dipping in and out of there we go right let me just wipe my table down okay right i don't know because i'm not sure what time i stopped the camera so i can't tell you what time you know how long I've been filming for but I'm thinking I'm probably up to the wire here so I'd best decorate one so I'm just going to go back to that very first one that we did because of course that's the only one that I've actually stapled the pages in so it kind of makes sense to go back to that one so I'm going to just take I think this um image which is obviously from the coordinating papers now this is printed on copy paper, um, you know, so it's, you know, it's flimsy. It's not kind of a robust piece or anything like that. But I'm just going to tie it, tie, tear this down and just see if we can somehow have this on the front of here. So probably need to tear it down further. Mm -hmm. Like that. Okay. Yeah like that I think now do we want to have anything like I'm kind of thinking maybe some doily or something in there let me just see if I've got any laying around I'm still trying to get used to where everything is in my new room and um yeah I mean things like that really take quite a while don't they so I mean I'm getting there but mm, things like now where have I put my doilies I'm not quite sure which is yeah a bit annoying but yeah I'm not quite sure what I've done with my doilies so um I'm just going to have to kind of go with this as as we are I think so right let me pull in some labels or oh, actually I've got my all right let's have a look let's have a quick look because I have also got my coloured book plates I'm thinking they might be good and I've got my butterflies so yeah oh Oh, look, what an idiot. I had my green labels actually printed out, so I needn't have even used that. So we could even have one that's actually, you know, printed on thingy, you know, solid solid paper. I'm not sure as that's a saying, but, you know. But actually, now I've put that there, I'm thinking that probably is good enough, actually. Right, let's have a quick look through. So I've got my coloured book plates. Oh, they're a bit too green, aren't they? Hmm. I've got this colour here. Oops. Oh, and while we're on the Buy Me A Coffee, actually, um, so, yeah, I'm going to hopefully do a giveaway soon on the Buy Me A Coffee site. No, I'm not on the site. It will be here on YouTube, obviously. Um, but, yeah, I will be doing a Buy Me A Coffee and... Um, 
I also, for some reason, the person who, when I did the Buy Me A Coffee giveaway last time, as far as I'm aware, they have never contacted me. Um, you know, I've obviously searched through my email. I have not been able to find an email from them. I haven't found an email in my shop or anything like that. I always feel very nervous just in case they have contacted me and somehow I've missed it because you know, my email is very clogged up, it's got to be said. Um, so, yeah, I hope that I am not wrong when I say that they never did contact me. But, of course, that being the case, I will be doing a redraw of the, you know, their buy me a coffee prize. Um, so I'm going to, yeah, hopefully have that coming up soon. Although to be honest, I say soon, it could be, it'll be weeks away yet, but just to kind of let you know that that will be coming up eventually anyway. And, um, yeah, as well as, you know, another, another draw for, um, buy me a coffee because it's, you know, it's been a few weeks now or, you know, a few months maybe since my last draw. So I will be doing another one, um, in the not too distant future, but yeah. Who knows, it may be maybe a while yet. But yes, that's the plan, is to do one soon-ish. Um, it's such a shame because when you do these draws, you know, yeah, I've had a few times where then the people haven't contacted me, you know, to get the prize. And, you know, like I say, you always feel a bit nervous then to do like a redraw just in case that person either did contact you and you've somehow missed that or you know I don't know they contact you after you do the redraw you know it's always like a bit oh I feel nervous to kind of just re redraw your prize you know just in case you kind of contact me but I mean in the end you do have to you know draw a line at some point don't you um yeah so I'm gonna have to do gonna have to do that I think but I would have really liked some um white doily on there but like I say I can't really think where I've actually put my doilies now so yeah just gonna have to go with it like this I think but anyway right let's have a look okay just going to see if I want to have some of this because I can't find the you know the white doily just going to see whether a bit of lace or something would be any better or not better but you know work just as well let's just say oh and also it's been really annoying I've had two punctures on my bike lately so I a couple of weeks ago had a puncture and took it into Halfords you know because it actually was kind of like it wasn't you know just in need of being re-pumped up it was proper you know proper puncture um would you believe I've had another one now? <laughs> Beginning to think somebody's targeting me and um, letting my tires down. But yeah, I no that one that one happened while I was out. I was literally biking along one minute fine, and then just suddenly it was like, oh my goodness, I must have a punch now because my tire was like going down as I was biking. And when I got home, you know, not far, it's like only five minutes. It was properly flat. So, yeah, I had to take my bike in to be repaired again um, at the weekend. And I just got it back yesterday. And, of course, they put the saddle right up high. I assume because they have to then check that your bike is, you know, bikeable um, and that the punch is fixed correctly. But, yeah, of course, then I went to get it on this morning to take my daughter to school. Oh, my saddle's right up in the air. So I had to quickly lower the saddle. I couldn't get it in the right place. I kept on lowering it and then getting on and saying to her, oh, hang on, it's still really high. And then I'd lower it a bit more and then it was like the same, you know. Oh, no, it's still a bit high. It must have taken me about five attempts to do it. Um, and then at one point I put it on and it was completely skew -if, which she was like, oh, mum, you can't bike to school like that. I said, well, is it noticeable? You know, it's a bit weird to bike, but, you know, I can put up with it. I said, is it really noticeable? She was like, uh, yeah, you look really strange. <laughs> so I still biked with it. I just went anyway. But um, yeah, anyway. And then I finally got the saddle kind of like, right, well, except for the skew if bit. Oh, then I got on and my chain had come off. So I then had to muck about putting the chain on. And you know, when you just do again, is this seriously, is this how my day is going to be the whole day? Because I should just give up now, to be honest. It was just destined to be one of those one of those days again so um yeah <laughs> I don't know not really daring do a lot else 
just in case. Just in case I'm heading for more disasters, but yeah. I thought, oh really? What's so faff? It would have been quicker to just run round to the school by, you know, on foot. Because I only live round the corner. Um, but it's just obviously biking is so quick compared to walking that, you know, yeah, the thought of walking is like, oh, really? But anyway, it was, it was fine. It was fine, but yeah, except I did just think, oh, what am I doing? I only live two minutes from the school. All this mucking about, so I could have actually been there and back probably by now. I think I'm just going to put it like that, actually. Oops. And make sure the flower's up the right way. Okay. Like that. Okie dokie. So that is our little finished um, little envelope booklet. So we've got a pocket here on the front. And of course, you know, you could always put some page, you know, some paper inside there as well. So you've got a decorative inside, which I might, you know, I might do that. Um, I've just kind of run out of time for now. Let me just see, see whether I could do that quickly. It's probably too big now, but oh, for goodness sake. Oof. It is, it is continuing as one of those days. I thought it might be. <laughs> so let's just trim this down at the edge. Um, yeah, but they're very, very pretty, aren't they? And like I say, I mean, you could put like lovely closures on these or, you know, however you wanted to finish them off. They're very, very versatile, aren't they? So yeah, I might just kind of have a little decorative paper in there. Let's see. Mm. Well, that's quite nice, except that, that butterfly wing. Mm. Let's just drop that down a bit more. Let's perhaps then move that over slightly. So a bit more like that. Okay. Oh, and I have one more, one more thing actually that I just need some feedback on actually. Um, and I might do a poll, you know, like the, the polls when I get a minute. But so um, I've got a friend who loves, um, you know, playing around with websites. And he so kindly said to me, you know, about the Etsy fees and, you know, was kind of like, oh, my goodness, you know, their fees are really a lot of money kind of thing. And said, well, why aren't you selling through your website? And I said, well you know, combination of reasons, A, I think people find it easier to go to Etsy, you know, um, and all of that kind of stuff. I don't know whether they'd want to go to my website, you know, and things like that. Um, and of course, there is the tax thing, but he said, well, the tax thing's fine because, you know, the tax thing applies in the country where you're buying it. So if they're buying it in the UK, you know, they wouldn't be paying the tax because you're paying the tax, you know. Um, so that all kind of made sense. So... I said, well, I'm going to put it out on my channel and kind of see what you guys think. How would you feel if you were just going direct to my www.shabbydabbydoodah.co.uk to make purchases? You know, if it was nice and straightforward and, you know, kind of operating, you know, in a very similar way to the Etsy <coughs> and obviously the same products all available, you know, would you feel com confident and comfortable going there? Um, or not really. So yeah, just let me know what you think. Um, I mean, obviously I do sort of, you know, uh, direct you there for freebies, you know. So I mean, hopefully most of you have probably been on my website before. Um, but yeah, just let me know what you think, whether it would be something that, you know, you'd be happy to do or not really, because, um, you know, obviously what I could do is then, you know, we could kind of like have a bit of a lower rate because I would obviously be saving on the Etsy fees. So, you know, it would hopefully be a bit of a sort of win-win situation. Um, but yeah, let me know anyway what you think. Again, I mean, I would obviously even have to look, you know, I'm not sure whether I would be that confident making the listings and things, but he would probably be able to show me how to do that. But, you know, it's probably a long-term project and would take probably a long time to set up anyway. But I just thought... I would put it out there and see what you guys think in the first instance. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Anyway, <laughs> all that waffling, I've barely drawn breath. Um, this is our finished little envelope booklet. 
obviously I haven't cut this open, but you could always cut the back open, like I say, for another pocket. But you've got a pocket here, journal space here. You've got obviously kind of four pages in here, which is eight sides and then more journaling space here. So you've actually got quite a lot of space in that tiny little, um, you know, really yummy, yeah, yummy booklet. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Hope that you have fun making some and thank you so much for watching. Hope everyone has a fantastic week and I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks then. Bye.